and so, so glad that you're here. Really such a treat. Uh, could you just tell everyone just a little bit about life in Kentucky and what your day looks like and who you spend them with? Yes. And Candace, thank you so much for having me. It's a, just a joy to always get to talk to you. So um, I'm, I'm happy to be a guest on your show today. And so, yeah, a little bit about me. I am um, a small town Kentucky girl. I have been married to my college sweetheart for 18 years now. And he and I have two children. Will is 13 and Kate is 11. And so they um, have just started middle school. And so that's been a new transition for us. Um, and then I am a writer. I have a book coming out uh, October 4th that is called A Little Goes a Long Way, 52 Days to a Significant Life. And then I'm also a podcaster and um, I have the Love Offering podcast. And there each week we just dive into how do we live out the greatest command to love the Lord God our, with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength and to love our neighbor as ourself. And so in our humanness, that can sometimes be hard to do. Um, and so I just talk to women each week that are just doing that with their different gifts and talents and resources, just trying to figure out how do we live out our faith practically on an everyday, ordinary, mundane basis. Yeah. Your podcast is so good. It's just right. And every time I listen, I just walk away just feeling challenged and realizing like it's possible. And as a mom, as a podcaster, as an author, and all the roles you do, I know that you know firsthand what it's like to live this busy life. And I think sometimes in the midst of the busyness, like we may want to reach out to a friend with like this grand gesture and, you know, be there for them, but we don't always have the luxury. Um, of that. And sometimes it's just a quick text or a short prayer, you know, set on our way to the next errand that we're running. But, you know, one thing that I really love in your book, A Little Goes a Long Way, it's in a lot of ways, it's the same lesson I feel like God's teaching me with the good day. And really the foundation of it all is that small and ordinary is not insignificant. You know, that there's great significance in the little. And so I'm curious, what has led you to write this book? Were you on your own search for significance? 100%. And I, I still am. I think that this is a battle and a tension I've been wrestling with for a very long time, probably the majority of my life, because, you know, when, when we just, you know, there's that saying that if we look at the highlight reels of everybody else and we can start to look at everybody else's big life, and I'm giving quotation marks there, that our life in comparison seems really small because we're doing, you know, the ordinary stuff, doing dishes and um, reading our Bibles and folding laundry and getting our oil changed and going to the doctor and sitting at the sidelines of a game or sitting in the cubicle in front of your computer, maybe all day long and have no interaction with somebody. And so you start to just, you know, I noticed myself real like laying down at night and thinking, gosh, God, did I accomplish anything for your kingdom today? Did I make a difference at all? And I, I just felt like that I needed to just dive into his scriptures and see what he said about it. And the more that I looked to his word, I found like he has always used little moments uh, collectively over time done consistently. He has used that to affect eternity um, and affect. And, and eventually, you know, he, he has always taken our little and taken it a long way. And so, um, you know, in my own life, I noticed that when I, maybe get a text from a friend at just the right time or an email or a call or somebody just smiles and says hello or my you know my children give me a hug and tell me they love me like it's sometimes it's like in those moments we can kind of overlook those and discount those but really to me um, I, I don't want to forget like the significance of those small things. And I, it, it builds my faith and it gives me so much hope to know and to believe that God is going to use those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, that's so good. I mean, there's so many things I want to dive into that. And first being, you talked about how God uses a little and how Jesus demonstrated the importance of a little. And I know you go into this more in your book, but can you share just a little bit about that with us? This was this was one of the most fascinating things I think that, that I found, because as, as we think about how we want to live our lives, I think, well, who better to model our lives after than, than Jesus who walked to the earth? And so, you know, it, in the very beginning of his life, he was born a baby in the tiny town of Bethlehem. And then he he worked with his father 
as a carpenter. And I think about even just as a child, he went to church probably in the synagogues with in the temple with his his mom, and he probably played with his siblings and had shared meals with his family. You know, the, the Bible doesn't tell us that, but like I can I can assume that as a little boy he did those things. Mm-hmm. But then as as we do start to read in the New Testament about how he lived his life and the things that he valued, it says that that he um, valued the birds of the air and the flowers in the field and the hairs on our head and the things that, that he noticed, he noticed like the woman that, that touched his garment, the um, leper who said, thank you, the woman by the well who gave him something to drink. You know, it, those were the things that he, he noticed and valued and rewarded. And so I just thought if, if nothing was too insignificant for the savior of the world, then nothing can be too insignificant for me. And so he spent his time sharing meals and holding children and washing feet. That's how he spent his time. And he did not discount like just spending time with one. You know, I think about the woman at the well. He went out of his way to meet with just her, to be present with her, to pray and talk with her. And so that too, then is how I should be spending my time and to value those little small moments that maybe nobody ever sees. What it means to you when your child like comes and gives you a hug and those little things, like sometimes we doubt the significance of a little, but then when we receive it, we feel it, you know, and Mm -hmm. I know even something as small as remembering someone's name, you know, like that is a prayer that's on my heart a lot, what, you know, and just the different circles that I'm in. It's like, Lord, help me to remember their name, you know, and I'm always being intentional. Like, okay, wait, what's their name? You know, and I see them just because when someone does remember my name and I've only met them once or twice, like, you know how validating that is. And um, it makes me feel seen and important, you know, and that, um, and so just even something as small as that, um, that just seeing that that's truly how Jesus lived. You you know, even world. in the even in the devotional, um, I had a friend that was traveling, and she was telling me this story one day about how she passed a homeless man, and she looked at him in the eyes because you know a lot of times I don't know about you, and I'm just maybe admitting this about myself. Sometimes we can be tempted to just turn our eyes away, and yeah. um, because we're uncomfortable or whatever the reason may be, and she looked at him in the eye, and he said to her, he said, "You see me," and it was almost a question. And she responded back to him and she said, yes, I I see you. And he said, nobody ever sees me. And so it just, and it almost brings tears to my eyes right now because, you know, to your point, even just remembering somebody's name, but to this, the story that my friend told and that she lived out the power of even just looking at somebody in the eyes and saying like, I see you and you matter to me. And maybe that's all we can give or just to say hello, just to start the conversation, you know, and I think that's the biggest thing that I'm realizing, like a significant life is much simpler than we think we've, we've overcomplicated and, you know, not, and again, I, I don't want to demonize doing big things for the Lord. I think that's great too, but I think a lot of times it's these little things that I think have a bigger impact than we realize. Absolutely. You know, and I think sometimes we doubt our value and our contributions because of the size. And maybe it's because we're like, just so results driven, you know, Mm -hmm. see something so big. And so how could you encourage those listening who believe that they're to believe they are making an eternal impact, even if they're not able to see those tangible results or how do we not doubt the value of our contributions by the size? You know, I I think we just look to the Bible and, you know, I'm thinking about the little boy that gave his lunch and Jesus multiplied it, the loaves and the fishes and fed thousands. And I wonder if when he gave that lunch or, you know, there's always the story that there was a mom who made that lunch (laughs) that was even behind the scenes of that. Right. But would he have ever guessed that that one small act would still be being talked about today? And I think that the same thing goes to the, you know, the widow who gave the two coins in the Bible. It was all she had to give. It was very small in comparison, especially to like the bigger offerings yeah. that everybody else would have thought that were so much better. But who does Jesus talk about? But the widow who gave all she had. And so I think that like, it, as we look to the Bible and how God used those little things, and we're still talking about them today. And I even look again back at my own life and maybe things that people thought were little, like um, 
some encouragement that they gave me at a time when I really needed it or belief in me. You know, my husband says often, he says, if you could see yourself through my eyes, it would change your world. Mm. And I almost think of the heavenly father saying the same thing to his daughters, like daughter, if you could only see yourself through my eyes, it would change your world. And so what does it look like to start to validate people, to affirm people, to give them encouragement, to, to believe in them. And that may seem so small and it may be just one little moment, one little word, one little text, one little prayer, but gosh, I believe that God is going to use that. And it could change the trajectory of somebody's life. And we may never know. Right. Well, and it just makes me think of the times when someone just was obedient to that nudge, you know, and right now in the podcast, we're talking about really paying attention. And I think we've got to pay attention to those nudges that Mm -hmm. we feel, even though they're very slight and very small, because those are the times that I still remember when I was going through a really hard time and a friend brought me a bouquet of flowers and just a simple note, of you know, three lines written on it. But it was one that I kept by my bedside table and I'd read again and again. And then, you know, another friend just sent me a card one day and another just brought me a meal and just these little things um, that were just monumental for me. Um, And I think that's just something we've got to pay attention to. We can't ignore that little nudge that we have because there's going to, it's going to be inconvenient. There's going to be something that comes up and gets in our way, you know, that's going to want to keep us from stepping out and reaching out to someone. Um, But if we can just push through that, um, I think that there's so much blessing. God wants to use those little things um, to really help someone else. Yeah. I'm so glad you said that because it really is. That's the prayer. Lord, how do you want to use me today? (laughs) And and let me be in tune with the Holy Spirit. And then I'm going to trust that, you know, even though I may feel inadequate, I feel like I don't have anything to offer, whatever our excuses can be, which are, those are typically mine or I'm too busy or whatever. Like, God, this is what I have. I give it to you and, and multiply it, use it. And and I trust, and I know uh, that he will. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that multiplication, like it's like long term, you know, like it hit me so much, but then it's like, then it makes me want to pay it forward and not to use that cliche term, pay it forward. But like, that's the multiplication, you know, then we do it for someone else and then they do it for someone else. And it just continues that very intentional mm-hmm. um, living towards people. It really is. I think people are paying attention a lot more than we think that they are. You know, to your point about like being a noticer, I was actually just in um, a Panera the other day and there were two Bible study groups that were meeting. One group was just, you know, had their Bible studies out and they were talking about the Lord and just talking about life. And there was another group of young, um, coll- they looked to be college age um, boys and they were praying out loud in front of people. And my family was sitting there like watching these two groups. And I, just, they were witnessing without even talking to me. And I think, gosh, isn't that powerful that, um, and it's just such a good reminder that, that people are watching how we're interacting with other people and whether they tell us that they were impacted or influenced by it or not, maybe they then are encouraged to kind of act in similar ways or to, if, if we smile at them, then they're a little bit happier and they're going to go smile at someone else. Um, And so I, I love the contagious nature of those attitudes and actions. Yes, it is. It's contagious. Exactly. That's the right word. So we're, you know, talking about how we're reaching for these tangible results, you know, on the same note, you've talked about how you are an achiever by nature, but how you're learning that sometimes we need to just actually do less. And so I'm curious, how have you learned to let less lead you um, rather than just trying to achieve more and more and do more? So this is, I definitely am um, achievement oriented. And I started really as a young girl. My dad is in business. He's an entrepreneur and he would, growing up, he would have us sign contracts to um, achieve a certain goal by a certain time and like sign and date it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think it can be a a good quality because it does help us set goals. It helps us um, make progress towards our goals. But a lot of times where I fall short is I've been, um, I want to just, that's how I see my value because of what I've accomplished. And so what I've been noticing about my relationship with the Lord is, is that when I'm always um, working towards a goal, then I don't leave room for him to work in in me. Mm -hmm. And so I...